the banking sector is experiencing an acceleration in change that's unlikely to end any time soon. And this has spurred an evolution in transaction services to provide clients with innovative, tailored cash management and financial services that offer greater transparency and ever tighter security. CISI is one of the organisations evolving at a rapid pace in order to reflect the new normal. One of their key messages is that success is achieved through cooperation and collaboration by working as a community. Well, to look at this in more detail, I spoke to Shamir Khalik, who's Global Head of Treasury and Trade Solutions at Citi. And I began by asking him how transaction services evolved in light of the pandemic. I think the, the world of transaction banking has always evolved. If you think the last 20, 25 years, we've been on a singular secular journey towards dig digitization. Um, how we started off initially, uh, business process outsourcing, a lot of manual processes got moved offshore. Then we looked to digitize them. I think what's happened really with the pandemic is that that process of digitization has only sped up. So if you think about what the corporate clients are looking for, they're really looking for, frankly, a frictionless, frictionless client experience. They're looking for far more of an interactive client service focused platform um, that they can effectively transact, manage their businesses day to day. Um, the third, the, the third big piece or, or, or the third big trend, frankly speaking, from my standpoint is, is this entire consumer way, which is businesses moving direct to consumer even faster than what, what we had estimated uh, that they would move. I think with the pandemic, with the lockdowns, I think what we've seen is businesses really take a, a big giant step towards going direct to consumer. So e-commerce is one major wave uh, that's come through. And therefore, you know, the resilience of platforms uh, the focus on APIs and digital connectivity has really come to the fore in, in a much faster way uh, than anybody else would have anticipated. Hmm. And from your perspective, are there additional transformations that could make as big an impact? I, I think the world continues to change. Um, and, and, you know, very topical, but, but absolutely a, a concept and, and a way of life that's here to stay is really talking about ESG, um, our, our footprint, and really how do we access both uh, from a balance sheet standpoint, uh, from an offering standpoint, how do we think about ESG going forward? I think um, I was talking to one of the senior economists at, uh, at an institute, and, and they said that, you know, the, the effect of the move towards this economy, which is going to be far more electric in the future, it's going to be similar to that of the oil price shock of the 70s. So effectively, you want to see this significant move uh, in the coming years as all our economies become less dependent on potentially on fossil fuel. So I think that is going to be another major wave uh, of transformation that I think it's going to come. I think it's already here. Uh, and I think governments, corporates, individuals are all making choices, thinking about ESG as well and, and this entire move towards uh, a far more socially and environmentally conscious uh, footprint. So I think that's another major trend that I think it's absolutely here to stay. Mm. And given the fact that we're operating in a shifting landscape, how do you see these changes impacting transaction banks? And how do you think we can realistically prepare for them? I, I think it's, uh, you know, the, I talked about the shift to digital and talked about ESG. I think it just comes down to um, one thing, and that is focusing on clients. Um, I think that's one thing that we've, again, always done. We're very, very client-centric, um, focusing on client needs and how they evolve. Uh, I think technology is at a place where it's never been before. Uh, we have access to technology that we didn't even think about, um, you know, five or 10 years ago. And therefore, that allows us to really stay ahead and continue to be in lockstep with how our clients and our customers are thinking in this in this ever more complex world. Mm. And let's stay with the idea of the client, because how do you see these changes impacting on them and above all the expectations they have of the sector? Um, I would say the clients and what their expectations are from banks are, I would say generally are the following, right? Uh, if you think about uh, access to balance sheet. First and foremost, how do clients get access to capital? And is that, what options does that capital give them? Working capital solutions, supply chain financing solutions, biofinancing solutions, really the, the entire spectrum of 
financing services that transaction services banks offer. The second one is really thinking about deploying excess liquidity. Um, as clients become uh, and look for far more ESG conscious um, investment platforms, really it's up to us to make sure that we're giving them access to deploy that liquidity into far more ESG um, friendly and ESG uh, conscious investment vehicles. Raising capital from third parties, I think that's another big uh, part of the entire agenda that I think banks will continue to um, help clients with. But last and not the least, I think one of the things that we at City pride ourselves on doing is really providing a platform that allows our clients to go global. Mm. And what this points to is something that I know you've spoken about in the past and which you feel very passionately about as well. And that is, and I quote, the value of succeeding together as an industry and a community. Can you tell us more about it and why it registers so high for you, why it is so important? Yeah, I, I, I think that, that those words just sum up exactly um, uh, what our aspiration is. I think SWIFT, um, as a community of banks, um, is really integral to making sure that we keep those wheels of commerce turning. Um, the ability for us to provide um, information, the ability for us to move money around the world, the ability for us together to allow for commerce to happen across borders, across different um, uh, various industry segments. I think that really speaks to the power of SWIFT, the power of collaboration that we have uh, uh, that we have within this organization. Um, City is, is absolutely committed to SWIFT, and I think there are a number of um, incremental developments I know SWIFT is working working on in the very, very near future. Um, you know, clearly there's ISO 20 or 22. I think as that goes into effect, that allows for banks to provide far better data and, and far, uh, far higher quality of transactional information than what we've done in the past. That allows for um, what I would call far more resilience around um, transactional flow, um, far better information being provided both from a beneficiary and a remitter standpoint. And lastly, very fewer, much fewer failed trades, rejected transactions uh, within the banking system. Mm, the bottom line is that the future is looking good. But Shamir Kalik, Global Head of Treasury and Trade Solutions at Citi, thank you so much for joining us today and enjoy Cybos 2021. Thank you so much, Julia. Thank you so much for having me. Much appreciated.